Welcome back to the Requirements Engineering Lecture. Today we're going to talk about tool support for the Requirements Engineering process. So not just specific tools for elicitation or for documentation, but rather tools that can help you throughout the whole process. In order to do that, we'll first talk about tool support in general, then about requirements management tools, and subsequently about introducing and evaluating tools. So let's talk about tool support in general first. What is the motivation there? Essentially, it's mostly about integrating and processing already existing information, like how could you do this in a more efficient way? This is where tools could help you. They can also help you to process information from requirements engineering, like make it easier to process natural language requirements or to work and process models. But they can also help you to process information that is the basis for requirements, like managing minutes or the goal documents or stakeholder lists, creating them, connecting them, managing them. So there, there are a lot of reasons why you could use tools that make your life a little bit easier. In practice, it's mostly support of requirements management activities, but there are also like tools that are used in elicitation, documentation or negotiation or other phases or throughout the whole requirements engineering process. What is in particular important is the traceability between tools, especially because you're going to use multiple tools. So when you have multiple tools, you would like to have interfaces for integration and traceability. Uh, if it's not there, it should be either like, if it, it would be great if it's there or at least easy to create. It should allow for tracing changes. It should allow for managing the traces and also like learning and understanding who made changes when and why. So for the computer scientists among you, something like GitLab uh, or Git commits where you know, okay, who committed what change, what was changed, when was it changed, what was the effect. So something along those lines, just on a more broader and general level. And there are some tools that you can reuse from exactly that context that I just gave you from, for example, the IT background. So tools that you lose, use to develop can also be used for requirements engineering uh, because there are like some connections already because they're often offer abilities to manage requirements like test management tools or bug tracking tools or configuration management tools. So what you already know from this context, you might be able to reuse there. The big advantage is that requirements are automatically integrated with the developed artifacts. Do so you have a direct link there? And the interface between requirements management tool and development tools are not required because they are the same. So you don't have to think about the interfaces there. Wikis are very, very popular and also among the very basic tools that can aid collaboration and support you in general in the requirements engineering process. They offer a simple to use and easy to access opportunity for collaboratively working on documents. So create different pages, you can create a type of content, you can create a glossary there, it's very convenient. The glossary part is also something where wikis really excel, because when we talked about the glossary set, it should be something that is accessible to everyone, preferably online, and you, you get the information right away. And this is what a wiki essentially provides. So it's very well suited for this use case. And also, if you have a lot of different stakeholders who are involved. Visualization tools can also be very helpful. Um, we already talked a little bit about mind maps as support, in, we talked about supporting techniques, uh, but they can also be used in other like scenarios, like brainstorming sessions, where you have presentation tools that can help you guide through meetings for describing a rough analysis or for coming up with new ideas. GUI modeling tools for prototyping user interfaces could also be quite interesting. So what could a user interface look like? So there is a button and if I click that button, I will get to this part of the system. And flow charting tools can also help you to depict processes and workflows, to better understand them, to analyze them, to understand dependencies and relationships. And there are definitely more visualization tools that you can use um, to help you throughout the requirements engineering process, just like giving you some ideas here. And then of course, there are also those everyday tools that you use anyway, but can be very helpful in the requirements engineering process. 
obviously mail clients. You talk to your clients via mail or some kind of chat software. Thunderbird already uh, includes the chat software in their mail client and an address book and an online calendar. So you have everything that you need for daily communication with all the relevant stakeholders, managing their context, when you meet, how you meet and so on. Project management and controlling tools are also required for managing the requirements engineering process, or at least they are very helpful. And they help the stakeholders with the coordination of tasks, also checking who put how much work in there, because if you work uh, based on an hourly rate or like per day, then you might also have to account for all of those information, like who worked on what for how long, and then you have to send an invoice to your client.